much. Uh, good morning, everyone. First, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Amit uh, Agarwal and uh, the institution for inviting me here, for giving me this opportunity to speak. The subject about which I'm speaking is uh, subject is the subject is uh, policy uh, support for research agricultural research for the benefit of small god of Parma. I think it got jumbled up here. So when we say policy <coughs> in India, as we all know, agriculture is a state subject. And it is a central government which actually formulates the policies and regulations. So there is always a conflict between center and states, between different political parties on agricultural policy. And uh, this has often led to situations where there is lack of and of coordination between the two and lack of alignment between the two. So each state has its own policies. So when we talk of policy, we have to understand the dynamics that uh, agriculture is a state subject and uh, center decides MSP of 23 crops, which is a major tool for deciding farmers' profits as well as to nudge the farmers towards growing the right crops. Uh, center decides import and export policies. Center procures rice and wheat essentially and cotton and they release the stocks for controlling the market prices. So there is a lot of role that center plays but there is also a greater role that is played by states in terms of formulating the policies. So when we say policy, we have to understand that it is more complicated than just being a policy. Coming to agricultural research, we are lagging behind. Today we don't spend even 0.5% of agricultural GDP on agricultural research. If I put together everything, including ICRs, budgets, universities, budgets, private sector budgets, all put together is less than 0.5%. The total agricultural GDP is around 45 lakh crores, and we spend less than 20,000 crores on agricultural research in the country. So there is a need to step it up to at least 1% to make any impact. We all know that research is a function of size. If there is not enough size in research, you won't get any results. So suboptimal investments are as good as not making any investment. Modern science and technology has to form a part of our strategy for agriculture and to because the issues are getting multiplied and private investments hold the key because governments all over the world have stopped investing. They don't have money to invest in these things because they are busy buying weapons and then fighting wars. So there is a need for private investment in agriculture. 87% of the farmers in India are small and marginal, so anything you do in India for agriculture has to do for small and marginal farmers. Research is a key for Indian agriculture. Uh, agriculture is a production process. So input-output ratios are very important. What inputs you use, what output will it give is a very important part of the research. Investment in research is key to use superior science and technology in agricultural inputs. Why investments have to go up urgently? Uh, climate change is a very obvious thing. Uh, depletion of natural resources, we have been seeing all this discussion about soil uh, degradations and then uh, destruction of soil structures and depletion of water resources and depletion of biodiversity. Uh, we have to enhance yields or we have to reduce population. So since reducing population is not possible, we have to increase yields. That is a very important thing and our yields are not on par with the best in the world, nor even on the averages in some of the crops. Abiotic and biotic stresses are increasing. Food security, so very soon will be 150 crores. So how do we make sure that we have food as well as nutritional security? Uh, food safety, there is an increasing emphasis. Minimizing post harvest losses. Last year, the estimate was around 90,000 crores worth of post harvest losses took place in the country. So, it's a very serious issue. So, how is our storage and transportation system, and how are we actually doing processing of agricultural produce to add value and to reduce post harvest losses? Mechanization is the thing. We all know that 45 to 55 percent of current cost of cultivation of all crops is on labor and this is going to get worse and worse as the labor cost increases and availability comes down. So mechanization is also a precursor for digitization so both have to go hand in hand and they have to be really brought up towards in the next 10, day, 10 years or next decade towards playing a much bigger role. So we have to be at the cutting edge of the technology to make our farmers globally competitive. Our markets have opened up <coughs> but our, <coughs> when markets have opened up 
our farmers have to fight with international farmers, global markets. Mm -hmm. Are they equipped, whether technologically mm -hmm. or from a policy point of view? So these are the issues. I will talk a little bit about seed industry initially, policy issues in seed industry, and then I'll say, I will also talk about other inputs. Intellectual property in seeds, um, one of the reasons why research investments are low is because there is an intellectual property protection or very poor protection and poor enforcement. There is a, There needs to be a system of recognizing uh, research companies, research investments, those who make research investments. We have more than 450 seed companies in the country, but hardly 60-70 companies make research investments. So there must be, under the law, there must be a mechanism to recognize these companies. Well, unless you recognize, you can't incentivize them. So I think that's where actually one of the issues lies. Tax benefits, which were there initially, have been withdrawn from 2016 onwards. So we have been asking that these tax benefits for research investments must be restored. And biological resources movement is controlled through BDA and it is controlled by NBA in Chennai. So this is an area where also there is needs to be thought. Unless there is a movement of biological resources across borders, you can't really improve your geoplasm. We all must understand that our green revolution happened because of biological resources which came from Mexico right, or from Philippines. So we have to know that uh, movement of biological resources is very important for enhancement of uh, the genetic pool in the country and also for developing better quality varieties. Seed Act is a very old act in the country. This is an act which actually regulates seed industry. It is uh, formulated in 1966. It is under review now, but uh, okay. under the Seed Act, we don't have a registration of seed variety in the country. That means anybody can sell anything, and there is no need for registration of the seed variety. So that is actually, and also there is no difference between a retailer and a large seed company okay. in terms of licensing. Both will get the same license. So I think that the, the new seed bill, which has been pending for the last 10 years, must get approved soon and they will bring a part of the bill says that mandatory seed registrations will take place, uh, will come into effect. That will actually bring greater uh, responsibility and answerability on seed companies when they introduce seed varieties. Regulations need to be more predictable and science-based, especially our regulatory regulations uh, for uh, assessment and uh, commercialization of new technologies, whether it is gene editing or GM or non-GM, whatever it is. But we need to have a strategic approach, so we are looking for uh, some kind of a, an agricultural strategy document by the government, which should be the first uh, starting point of a policy framework. We need a basket of technologies. Agriculture in India uh, is uh, so heterogeneous and so different, so, so diversified that a single technology cannot work all over the country. Like uh, the gentleman from TNA said that it varies from every square kilometer to square kilometer. So we need to have more customized kind of approaches to different places. So there's no silver bullet. Crop nutrition, we have to reduce chemical fertilizer basal applications. There is no doubt about that to save soil structures and research investments into reducing basal applications have to take place. And for uh, new agronomic practices, how do you actually use fertilizers in a way that they don't damage the soil? So there needs to be research into that. Biological products have to be brought out, which, which are much more, and they have to be used much more. Liquid fertilizers, nano formulations. Yesterday I was talking to a scientist from IIT Delhi, and they are working on nano formulations of fertilizers and pesticides, which is the way forward. So such research must be encouraged by the government, must be funded by the government partly, and uh, <coughs> reducing subsidy on chemical fertilizers is also very important. You know, uh, right hand of the government must know what the left hand is doing. There is a very important thing in policy. And uh, if there is a heavy fertilizer subsidy, and on the other hand, the government is promoting natural farming, they don't go together. There is free water. Yesterday I was listening to Punjab, Director of Agriculture speaking. Government gives free water, and on the other hand, they give 1500 rupees per acre for promotion of DSR. So you are giving free water then you are giving 1500 rupees not to use that water. So it's actually, uh, it's actually funny. So these are the things which have to be actually seen as a comprehensive policy framework we must have. 
crop protection chemicals all chemicals are not bad but crop protection chemicals can be useful if they are used properly and if you get the right technologies into that there are technologies available outside where you use much less volume of active ingredient <laughs> active ingredient into the environment so they can be safer for the environment so we must get such things through a strategic approach to this now on water i have to spend two minutes on water because that is also focus of this meeting stop free water i think as a policy there must be an understanding across political parties and across states that you must stop free water you must stop flood irrigation these are very simple and it has to be done means it has to be done otherwise we don't have water for more than another 15 years or to 20 years in the country for agriculture micro irrigation has to be promoted on a large scale the need for disproportionate investments in this there are two things uh, the drip irrigation which is expensive there is the flood irrigation which is cheap but destructive and then you have in between nothing so you need you need uh, other machines i think today afternoon you have is swati making a presentation yeah, yeah. so she will talk about this uh, hose wheel system which is actually which fits in between and it is important that we we must fund such things which are which are very customer friendly for the farmer we also have to develop suitable crop varieties which are suitable for micro irrigation and which are suitable for dsr all of them will need seed invest seed industry investments to bring varieties which suit such um, the such technologies water use efficiency in crops is very important we have to develop it through either breeding efforts or through technology and government also must support such investments and also economic practices i like i mentioned dsr is one um, minimum tillage is another uh, there could be hdps system in cotton various things are there where uh, government can influence some of these things either through direct financial support or through ppp models or through some kind of facilitating environment they can create in the market and extension particularly msp is a msp is a big tool in the hands of the government to promote this thing and promote crops which need less water millets is something on which we have talked about sustainable agriculture we talk about subsidy programs water and power subsidies must go fertilizer subsidy only is promoting nitrogen so that must come down and all agree and so we made a recommendation i was a part of a uh, dr baroda committee where we made a recommendation to the government that all subsidies put together including food subsidy comes to 5 lakh crores and instead of uh, doling out money 6000 rupees per acre type of uh, dvts you use this 15 lakh crores and repurpose it towards promoting sustainable agricultural practices it works out around 15000 rupees per acre so give some of that money for growing the right crop give some of the money for uh, following the right agricultural practices give some of the money for reducing water usage give some of the money for protecting the soil so sustainable agriculture must get this five lakh crores to be repurposed agroecological zones uh, crops must fit the agroecological zones and if you go by that principle the rice has no place in punjab and haryana <laughs> right it should not be grown there fundamentally so can you match the agroecological zones and the crops that must be grown that is also a big uh, step towards uh, promoting sustainable agriculture mechanization the biggest uh, hurdle for mechanization is that farmer cannot buy machines so i think the custom service models are the models to go forward the custom service centers cannot be run profitably by entrepreneurs because the machine capacity utilization will never allow that because of the seasonality of business so it needs right sizing of machines on one side but also it needs suitable Uh, seed varieties to be developed to suit mechanization, but also it needs financially. Okay. Banks must support such uh, centers uh, to be able to actually have an asset-heavy model in which this is possible. Digitalization we talked about. Uh, we have to fund very large-scale project, very large-scale digital public infrastructure and digital public goods must be developed in the country. Now, on the lines of UPI, why not if a if a bank advertises that. i can get a loan in 20 minutes on the app why can't a farmer get a loan in 20 minutes on the same app he can't because there is not enough data available so data is the one which must be brought together 
data is available at multiple places, but can it be brought together and there is a collaborative effort and the data providers and data users both can use a platform on which the data providers get rewarded for providing the data and the data users actually develop business models and service models which are very beneficial for the farmer and they pay for the data that they use. So that is also something on which we are talking to the government. So finally, agricultural research needs to be scaled up very urgently and whatever I have said so far is all summarized here. So I think it's important that we recognize the need and the importance of having a strategy for agriculture. You would be very surprised to know that we don't have an agricultural strategy document in the country. Right? So what is it that we are trying to achieve? That is the first step for the government to do if they want to create a policy framework that will actually help us to develop either technologies or product or uh, economic practices or extension methods or technology transfer models. Everything is dependent on ultimately the best policy government can follow is not to do anything, not to interfere in anything. That is the best policy government can have. But all our governments are control freaks. They will not leave that. So that means, can we repurpose that control towards a facilitating uh, role rather than a controlling role? That's where actually we need to have a continuous dialogue with the government. And when I say government, again we propose that there should be, like on the lines of national uh, national council, there should be national agricultural council in which all the states are there, central is there, other stakeholders are there, and we sit and decide on policies which are suitable for the country and for the farmer. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Long live India and France friendship.